What's going on guys? Today we're going to be doing a quick install video. We're going to be installing these LED lights on a back rack on a 2015 Ford F-150. Um, so what you're going to need to do this is you obviously need to get some lights. Um, these are some eBay LED lights. You don't need anything fancy. We've got 14 gauge marine wire that's two stranded. Um, then we also have some wire sheathing. And then what this what my friend opted to do was so that you don't have to go through the firewall into the cab. This is a pretty neat switch. Um, it's wireless. So like I said, you don't have to go through the firewall. And if you're just hooking up one set of lights, it'll save you a lot of time. Um, it comes with a nice little key fob that you can attach onto your keys. And this is how you actually control when the lights will be on and off. So we're going to run through the steps on how we're going to do this. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to actually drill holes in the back rack, which we have already done. Um, and then what we're doing is we're using some rust black rust-oleum just so that we can spray paint the holes so that they hopefully don't rust. Um, you're not going to see it, uh, so it doesn't really matter how pretty it is. And then we also used, make sure you use some cardboard so that you don't accidentally spray paint your back window. Next, we're going to be hooking the lights up and then the rest is pretty much all wiring. Uh, we're going to snake the wires underneath the truck. That's why we have the sheathing and the marine grade wire so that we don't have any rust issues or anything like that. This will be protected from the elements. All right, so what we realized um, when we went to mount these lights up is that the type of racket that we used to mount them wouldn't actually allow us that much space to work um, to solder these wires up while they're actually attached to the back rack. So what we did was we went ahead and we measured out the lengths of wire that we needed. Um, we gave ourselves a little bit of extra because it's way easier to cut some off than it would be to add because we're going to be kind of working underneath the truck. So now what I'm doing is I'm going and I'm soldering the connections together. Um, as you can see, this is what a finished product looks like. Um, I used heat shrink and we soldered together. So I'm gonna run through real fast how I would solder this ground wire together. So we have stranded wire here. There's two types of wire. There's stranded or solid. Um, if you have two sets of stranded wire, which we do have here, you're gonna wanna kind of pull them apart. Um, that way you can put them together and twist. That'll give you the most solid connection you can possibly have from these two. Um, something that's important to do too is since we are going to be using heat shrink, you want to make sure you put your heat shrink on first because if you solder these together, there's no way for you to put the heat shrink on after you've made the solder connection. So now that we have those twisted up and our heat shrink is sitting off to the side, we're going to take some electric flux just a little bit, um, put it on the wires, and then we're going to grab our soldering iron and some solder um, some people like to put a little bit of a little bit of solder on your soldering iron before you start um, hold it make sure you've got a good firm connection you'll see that the flux will start to burn apart and then as the wire heats up we're gonna be just putting some solder on and it'll kind of just go right in you don't need too much um, then you just kind of set it off to the side and make sure that you don't really touch it when it's scorching hot. Um, once this cools down, what we're going to do is we're going to be using this dielectric grease. Um, we're going to put some of that on, slide the heat shrink over, and then we are going to just use a heat gun, heat it up. Um, so I'll show you guys. This is kind of goopy. That's why I'm wearing gloves. Um, but you kind of just layer this on there. Then this heat shrink already kind of shrunk because of the heat from the soldering. But luckily it's not too shrunk. Once you got that, take your heat gun and you heat it up. And this will give you your connection. Um, also, as you'll notice, when you're heating up the heat shrink, some of the grease will start to ooze out the side because it's it's uh, getting tighter. So once you're done, then you're just gonna wanna wipe that off. But that's how you solder wires together for the most part. All right, so as you guys can see, we've got the lights mounted up. They're a little bit loose right now because we didn't decide on what angle we wanna set them at, but the wiring is partially complete. Um, so if you look, we've got it going down the back of the back rack. What we found out is that there are these holes here. These are little grommets, but there is no hole down here on the back of the back rack. If you wanted to, I suppose you could drill back here so that you wouldn't see any of this sheathing. It would go in there, down through this and out the back, but that's a lot of extra work. So we opted not to do that. Um, our wires are going to run up the passenger side of the truck. So what we did is we have 
this one the driver side wire goes down and then it's just tucked back here between the bed and the cab and it runs all the way across to the passenger side the passenger side one drops down and then they both drop down this gap to over here which i'll show you guys what we had to do so once you have those two wires coming out this is just a grommet and we're going to tuck this all underneath what i had to do is we spliced the two wires together to one main wire which is going to run up or along the frame of the truck um, we'll probably zip tie it or make sure that it doesn't drop down in any way and then the wire is going to come all the way up here and it's going to pop out um, up by the battery and where we're going to work on the switch so once i have this all tucked up underneath we'll show you guys how we did that um, and then we'll talk about wiring the switch into place so here we are everything is wrapped up all the wiring is connected um, what we've got going on here is this is all of the switch. Um, what we did was we shortened some of the wires and just reconnected to them via soldering. Um, this is the actual single wire that comes from the two lights that we spliced in. I'll try and show you guys as best as I can where that comes from. Um, it goes down here. It's tucked back behind this fuse box area. That goes down. We tried to avoid, um, avoid anything that could potentially be hot. And it comes down from um, down there. It basically follows one of the frame rails up. I'll go underneath the truck and show you guys. Um, but basically everything is connected. There is two lights installed. Um, we still haven't fully decided on what angle we're going to set them at. But once we do that, we'll tighten them down. But the basic rundown is you have the two lights. You have your two sets of wires coming down. Um, we snake the one from the far side just behind this. Um, some zip ties so you don't actually see any of the wiring and it's all in a protective sheathing it drops down here and then underneath the truck I'll get in here and show you guys we have got the wiring and you can barely see it we need to snip a few more zip ties but here is the two wires they drop down from behind the bed and then they snake over this frame rail the entire way down the truck um, and it's in a protective sheathing so that hopefully uh, it doesn't get beat up too badly. And that is also why we went with the marine grade wire because this way it protects it from the elements as best as possible. So that runs all the way down the frame rail and up into the engine bay where you guys saw the connections that we made up here. Um, so we'll show you how it looks. Um, and something that we actually discovered with these is so here's the remote that it came with um there's two more buttons on it um and they actually are flasher buttons so depending on what type of lights you're running you can run them but all it is is you got it on and there's the lights so off and on these things are super bright i'm really happy with how they came out um if you guys have any questions please feel free to comment um i'll try my best to respond um and i can help you out with something if you're trying to wire it for yourself.